Tuesday the 10th of May. I'm here in Colville at the Matsura Additive Manufacturing Open House. I'm with Peter Harris. Peter, Good nobody morning. here yet because it's still very early. Um, we're going to have a quick tour of the facility, so we're going to be able to see what people can come and see this week. But quickly, tell us about this place. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd like to think it speaks for itself. It's one hell of a new facility we're opening up today. Obviously, as you know, we've been with HP now for four years and with great success. And I think the vision of Roger now to add in desktop metal uh, in E-Tech, I think it's going to give us a, a really great place to focus the technology. OK, now just um, tell people how long the open house is on for, because obviously it's on today, Tuesday the 10th. But when does it finish and, and, and where, where is it here? Obviously, it's here in Colville in Leicestershire. We're on today the 10th, and then tomorrow and Thursday. We've still got a few spaces left on Thursday, but we're glad to say absolutely rammed today and tomorrow. Yeah, I believe you're expecting around 50 people today and probably the same tomorrow. So let's show those and others what people can expect to see, not just if they don't come here this week, but at any time here, Peter. Absolutely. HP, how much have things moved on and give people a very quick overview of this technology? Well, obviously the 5200 here is now our serial production machine, really good economy. And obviously, you know, over three to four years now, I, um, I'd like to think we really are the experts in this technology now. What are you printing here? What would people be using this to print? Honestly, it's so cross diverse now across industries from automotive to packaging, um, to aerospace. Honestly, now there is no single technology that it, this doesn't go into now. Bridging the need to production as well, isn't it? You're going into oh, production. I, I would say now we've moved in four years to now probably 50% of the people now making production parts. Wow. That's how a massive change. How things change. Is there any difference between the two machines that we see here? No, 4200 was just the first printer that HP launched on the production side. 5200 is just a, um, a more economy focused printer with just some of the tips and tricks we've learned over the years but both still very current both still have their place in the market good stuff okay now behind you this is where we can see a little bit of printing actually happening now desktop metal this is a, a new journey for Matsura isn't it um, what are we doing here and what can people see in this in this sort of cell yeah as you know obviously desktop metal has joined us now and a part of the reason for expanding now is to welcome desktop metal into the into the portfolio um, we're here printing titanium, um, just as an example of the materials, there are many more, and we're actually printing an impeller here, and we've got the desktop fibre, which is slightly different because it's not metal, that's peat, pet, and carbon fibre tape, unusual, but a great little printer. Okay, and would you be encouraging people to think differently about how they're making parts these days? Because it's, it's education to me, 3D printing. So much has changed and so much yep. is evolving that um, people will be coming here not realising the boundaries that they can push with the machines. If we step yeah, this way, Yeah, and Peter. I think we're seeing that now more and more with everybody who comes through the door. There was a time a few years ago you'd always be talking about, I want to make this. Now they're thinking about, well, if I design it like this, I can really get the benefit of the technology. So I think there's a massive change. Mm. And I think to some extent, pandemics brought that yeah. as well. So people are now focusing on how they can design parts now to use the technology. And that's a massive change. And I've got to say, your expertise, we've done lots of videos with Peter, uh, and there's lots on our channel about this technology. And of course, if you come here this week, you'll be able to go into great detail about not just the printing processes, but the post processes as well. Um, show the parts, show the parts you've yeah, got in your hand and what this machine it's does. It's just part of the workflow that we've got. Um, as we can see here, we're taking parts that are straight off the shop, the powder base system from desktop metal. And obviously we're using here from AM Solutions, um, a polishing. And with the media, with the, within a very short run, we can make the parts look really good. And I think it's the same as we've always seen. Do you want to put the other ones in? Because you've got People two want here. to see post-processing. They want to see... They want to see how... The, the part's going to finish, really. Yeah, absolutely, because I think people see the part. But actually, it doesn't take much to polish parts to get them into a really nice state. And it's just a little bit... So of where have these been printed? What have these been printed on? They've been printed here on the shop system that we'll have a quick look at now. OK, let's have a look at that. So if you, if you thought that you couldn't achieve surface finishes in the whole process, obviously you can here, Peter. Obviously this, this is, is not even going into grinding, milling. This is, you know, this is just a short polish. Just to see, sorry. This is just a short polish to really give people a quick idea. Okay. So this is powder base printing. So we'll be starting Will this, this off shortly. Will this door lift up? Can we lift this up at all? Mm, you have to break in. All touch screen controls as well. I mean, this is, you know, something we haven't gone into great detail on our channel 
um, the control systems on it's these It's a beautiful machines. screen. It does look Because nice. you can see they've, Take a look they've at put that. the video guidance into the maintenance operations. It's a well thought out, beautiful yeah. screen. It's okay, probably so the backbone of the system. Obviously, so we can here, only just open it at the minute because we've got no powder. So these are your build areas, are they? Yep. Yeah, so we will, very, very shortly before we open, we'll be filling that side up with powder. We layer out powder very much similar to what we do on the HP. But here we print a binding agent, remove the build box. And then what we do is we bind that part in the curing oven, which okay. we've got behind us. Yeah. And then from that, we take it away from the powder, recycle all that powder, and then we've got the furnace. Okay, now I just want to look at this because I saw this earlier. What's happening there, Peter? Can you explain for the camera? What we're doing is we're mixing the powder ready for today. Um, powder management is probably the biggest part of a metal powder workflow. So drying the powder, sieving the powder. Now what we're doing is we're blending that powder with some virgin powder so that we've got the powder in an absolute perfect state. So if you want good parts, you need you've got powder. to put good powder and you've got to manage that powder workflow. So there we're blending what we're going to be using today. Yeah. And then we'll get that into the curing oven tomorrow. So you can see we're not just selling the equipment like what we've done with HP. We want to be users of the equipment. Mm. We're making our own parts. We've got our own furnace, our own gas supplies. We want customers to come to us because we want to be the experts yet again in another technology because I think our customers have expected that from HP. Well, you've really, really flourished. I can't tell you how impressive uh, or how impressed I was when I walked through the doors here this morning. Um, now, we're not going to spend too much time here on, on my left or your right, Peter, but again, no, more machines, more HP obviously, machines. Yeah, we've got post -processing. post processing stations for the powder mixing and the unpacking for the HP because we've got PA12, PA11. People go, why do we have three? and we've got TPU and PP because we want to offer all those different materials. And then most key to the HP now is the success of Dimension. So we've got PowerShot C cleaning, PowerShot S polishing of parts, and we've got chemical smoothing on the PowerFuse S. And then obviously we've got DM60 and what we're going to be seeing through the next three days is we're going to be unpacking parts from yesterday's print, printing again today, and we're going to be cleaning, dyeing, polishing those parts taking them through to a final part again. You, you've um, sort of marketed or advertised this place as uh, almost like the only solution center for additive manufacturing here in the UK. Um, and what I've got to say is that you've really thought in detail about that start to finish, haven't you? Because here, this is really, this is what you can get off some of these machines. And this is a lot of what people want to see and need to see really to learn what they can achieve. This is obviously HP here then, is it Peter? Yeah, HP this side, yes. So very much our core MJF components from, you know, the original fixture we did probably about three and a half years ago, proving quite how plastic was so strong. You know, and here we are now with production-based components, multiple colours from the dye. You can see the smoothness of the parts yes. we get with the vapour fusing. Some of these. Um, you look at things like this. It's amazing where we've come in the four years. Yeah, absolutely fascinating. It really is thinking outside the box. And then, to summarise, to finalise, this is where uh, a lot of people and now looking to metal printing, and this is what people can see here and talk to you about as well, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So we've got some great examples from the studio system here. And in, you can see from copper, titanium, 316 stainless. And then obviously from the shop system, the powder-based, again, you can see there's some really nice detailed parts. And again, you know... Even the finishes on With these. the automotive components, you can see what we get from that same polishing process. Mm -hmm. You know, we can make from straight from the furnace, from a small amount of polishing, a really high-end component. Um, and I think very much the theme of the whole facility is that end-to-end -end workflow. Customers um, want to see drawing to final product. Yeah. They don't want to see it done somewhere else. They want to see it in person. Um, and that's I could talk to you all day about this technology and looking at the parts that you make, and I'm sure if people come here, they're going to be uh, equally as amazed and you know, intrigued and impressed with what you're doing here, Peter. Just remind people where they can come to and how long this open house is on for. Uh, so if they want yeah, to visit this So week. obviously, if this is Matsura Machinery. We're in Colville in Leicestershire. We're open today, the 10th, but I'm sorry to say we're full today. And we're open tomorrow, the 11th. Again, I'm sorry, absolutely <laughs> rammed. We do have spaces still on Thursday which is the uh, 12th. Yeah. Um, so, you know, go online and find us and you can book. Um, I think this is just 
a massive statement for where we, we're going to be moving forward with HP, with Dimension, desktop metal and E-Tech. I think this is a, a big stick in the ground for our intentions. Yeah, very, very impressive. If you can't make it here this week uh, on the days that Peter stated or the day that they still have availability, then of course you can come here any other day of the year. You just need to contact uh, Peter here at Matsura. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Peter. Really impressed. Pleasure.